Dwarf Fortress is a Civ simulation game. If you are familiar with games like RimWorld or Going Medieval, you know what I'm talking about. However, there is something very special about DF. Its world is generated randomly. But where most games generate different biomes, enemies and dungeons of the world, Dwarf Fortress takes it one step further and also simulates that world's entire history. Welcome Legions of the Undead, I'm Lich, and today we will take a look at Dwarf Fortress's random world generation. As I said in the intro, Dwarf Fortress is procedurally generated, but it is done in a really interesting way. Many games like Minecraft, Terraria and so on generate their worlds on a pretty surface level. By that I mean biomes, NPCs, enemies and structures are created and that is perfectly fine. And I really love these games, but Tam and Zack Adams, the creators of Dwarf Fortress, apparently took a look at this and said, oh, we can improve upon that. And yeah, they went pretty crazy. So let's take a look at it. When you launch the game for the first time, you have to generate a world before you can even really start playing. The world generation screen looks like this and is split up into 7 sections, but the most interesting one for today's video is this, history. Now that dial controls whether world generation takes 5 minutes or 1 hour. That is not a joke. When my fiance got her new computer and we booted it up, she had to install Windows. While she was doing that I generate a new Dwarf Fortress world. And it took almost as much time to generate that world as installing the Windows 10 operating software. Anyway, why am I even talking about this? So the game procedurally generates history. So what? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Now that your world is created, you can start playing. There are three game modes available. Fortress mode, which is the main mode of the game, about managing dwarves, keeping them alive and so on. Adventure mode is where you take control of a single dwarf and go on adventures. And then we have Legends mode. In Legends mode, you can read about everything that is going on in your world. Every historical figure, every artifact, every faction landscape and so on. There is full backstory on everything. There is so much stuff here, even if your world history is short. And the thing is, it affects the game as well, like the main game modes. You might stumble upon a forgotten sword or accidentally uncover some ancient evil. There are hundreds of Dwarf Fortress stories about weirdest and most awesome things that happen to players. While you play, armies are marching, wars are fought, empires rise and fall. Maybe someday a traveling bard will visit your fortress and tell your story that transpired in the world's history. And I think that is super cool. The world just feels very alive in a sense. Perhaps one day a necromancer on the other side of the continent decides to raise an army of the dead and take over the lands. No, I don't know who would do such a thing. But yeah, before you know it, your dwarves might be beards deep in the undead remains of their former brethren. You can just sit down and study the history of your fictional world. You can adapt it and, I don't know, make a Dungeons and Dragons campaign out of it, which is honestly something that I would like to do one day. It's honestly astounding that studying history is a legitimate way to play this game. And this is why I think that Dwarf Fortress has one of the most interesting systems of random world generation. If you know a game with similar mechanics regarding like generating worlds or history, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to experience Dwarf Fortress for yourself, you can play it for free. I will leave a link for that in the description of the video. Again, I think this game is truly outstanding and I can't wait for the Steam version to release sometime. Until next time, I'm Ariel Lich. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and goodbye.